A lot has happened in December. It was a busy month for all of us. But I'm not talking about the busyness that you may be thinking. I'm speaking about our spiritual journey throughout this new liturgical year. I think it's important that we recap just what's happened so that we can appreciate it, even though it's been so busy. Together we prepared ourselves for four weeks in Advent in anticipation of the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Then on December 25th, we celebrated the high point in our liturgical year so far with Christmas. Then just days later, we celebrated the Feast of the Holy Family. Now we find ourselves gathered again here to celebrate the solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. There's a lot of wisdom in the way that the calendar is put together for the Catholic tradition. As we reach to imitate Christ, we realize that we need the support of our brothers and sisters in this world, and especially our families. These families must themselves follow the example of the Holy Family, of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Yet even before our families can provide the foundation for our attempt to imitate Christ, we as individuals are called to be first disciples of Jesus. Today I'd like to look at how we can be better disciples of Jesus Christ through the example of Mary. She was the first disciple of our Lord and certainly must have known him best as his mother. So the tips that we're going to learn from Mary's discipleship, I'll try and translate into some possible New Year's resolutions for all of us. So as the first disciple and indeed the mother of Jesus, we learn a lot from Mary, and we can learn even more than what we already know. She shows us what it means to be close to Jesus, what it means to be an authentic follower of God through her words, and especially through her actions. Three things from Mary's life that I'd want to draw on and identify for us, I'll focus on now. First, Mary said yes. Mary said yes. And just like Mary said yes to the angel Gabriel's invitation, some weeks ago we heard to bear the Son of God, to be the mother of our Messiah, so too you and I should begin our calendar year by renewing our yes to that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And this yes can take different forms. I think it starts by understanding what that yes is means, what we're saying yes to. In just a few minutes, we'll recite the Nicene Creed. Today and throughout this new year, we may choose to take time to get to know what it is that we say in the Creed, what it is that we actually believe, so that the yes that we make each time we recite the Creed, each time we say yes to that relationship with Christ, will come from a point of understanding, a point that is from an authentic heart that speaks to the Lord. Renewing our yes means knowing the person that we're saying yes to. One of the best ways to get to know Jesus is by reading about him in the New Testament, reading about his life. So in this new year, we may want to set aside a routine of maybe reading just one chapter in the New Testament each day at a regular fixed time so that we know, for example, at 7.45 p.m. any night, we're reading one chapter of the New Testament. Just like we make regular times to set aside to come to Mass each week, maybe to exercise or play sports, certainly to go to work, go to school, have meals. Time for the Word of God is how we make our yes to Jesus real, tangible, and practical in our lives. So that's, it's a good chance now to begin a new habit, if we haven't already, in terms of our saying yes to that relationship with Jesus. Not only was Mary known for this yes and her relationship with Jesus, she was known for her deep life of prayer, her deep life of prayer. Today's gospel, we hear how Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. This new year, we may decide that we may need to pray more frequently. We may want to set aside quiet time from our busy lives to pause, to take time to pray, to speak to God, to enter into a personal, personal conversation with him about anything and everything that's going on in our lives. As you know, communication is essential for everything in life. Communication is essential for marriage, 
essential in any relationship or friendship, essential for work, while at school, playing sports, on a team. Everything that we do requires communication. It's our way of expressing ourselves so that we are understood by others. But similarly, good communication requires that we listen to another person so that they may be understood and that we may share that dialogue. The same is true if we want to build on the relationship we have already with God. If we want it to grow, if we want to grow as disciples of Jesus, we need to continue and to foster that communication with God each and every day. And that communication is a call, it's an invitation to prayer. Prayer can be through many different ways. Some people use many words when speaking to God, maybe in the privacy of their home or in a quiet place. It can be done by reciting prayers of the church that we may know, such as the Our Father, the Hail Mary. For some of us, those words are, or those prayers are already arranged for us, and maybe it is exactly what we need to say to the Lord. Some prefer to sing, singing a song and worshiping God that way. Music stirs their soul, it warms their heart, it stirs the Holy Spirit within them, while others may prefer to just spend time in silence with God, listening to that still, silent voice in their hearts. If we hope to grow as disciples of Jesus Christ in 2015, we must learn to communicate with God just like Mary did, taking time to treasure the Word of God in our hearts as well. This year, we may want to set up another simple routine of five or ten minutes a day of reflection, of meditation, taking time to ponder the Word of God in our hearts, just like Mary did. You can do that with the Gospel of the Sunday to come, the Sunday that just happened, the, the Gospel from the daily readings. We could just randomly open the Bible and see what happens. Some people call that kind of like a, a Jeopardy or Bible Jeopardy or something where you just open it up, you never know what you're going to get but maybe the Lord will speak to you in exactly your life circumstance randomly that way. Disciples of Jesus must develop a deep interior prayer life, a deep spiritual life that's connected with the Holy Spirit who dwells within each one of us and wishes to guide us in our lives. Mary was deeply in tune with the Holy Spirit, so much so that when the angel greeted her, he said, Hail, full of grace. This was only possible because she was able to enter into the stillness of her heart to communicate with God through prayer. And you and I are called to do the same each and every day. The third occurrence in Mary's life that I want to draw on is the wedding feast of Cana. If you'll remember that story, they ran out of wine. It was quite the disaster at any party or, or wedding to run out of wine. But Mary told the servants to do whatever he tells you, to do whatever Jesus tells them, to listen to and follow whatever Jesus asked them to do. Here Mary teaches us to trust Jesus completely, especially in our time of need or in time of urgency. This is often difficult for us since we want our prayers answered immediately the way we want them to be answered. Mary teaches us that sometimes we don't know how God will act in our lives. But the lesson that we need to remember is that God will act in our lives. Being a disciple of Jesus requires deep faith and a tremendous trust that Jesus will do what is in our best interest for the long run. That long run is for the salvation of our souls. This, often, this is often difficult to understand, especially in the area of suffering or persecution. But again, all we need to do is look to Mary as the example of a wonderful disciple, as a faithful follower of the Lord. Mary could have told Jesus to take back what he said when he was put to the test, to maybe deny his divinity that he was the Son of God, so that she wouldn't have to suffer and watch her son be tortured and crucified. No, not even then. Mary trusted Jesus, that he knew what he was doing, that somehow this great suffering that she would endure, that he would endure, had a greater good, was working for some greater purpose. In this case, it was to destroy sin, to destroy death, and ultimately open the gates of heaven for all of us. This new year, we can resolve to trust God more with our lives, and especially in our struggles, especially noticing how Mary did likewise. Maybe a suggestion for that first scripture passage, for that 
meditation of five minutes today or tomorrow if you choose to accept it. Could be Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Prophet Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know well the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for woe. Plans to give you a future full of hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. My friends, this past month has indeed been hectic for many of us. And as our calendar turns now to 2015, let's resolve to be greater disciples of Jesus like Mary was. Let us renew our, renew our yes to that personal relationship with Jesus, her son, knowing that any follower of Christ takes time to know him, to know their God, to communicate regularly with him through prayer, and always trusting that God knows what he's doing, even when we're faced with suffering or persecution. Together, let us ask Mary, the mother of Jesus, the mother of our church, to help us to grow and be faithful followers of Christ, greater disciples of our Lord. I invite you to join me. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.